there are really three very distinct product lines at Harrisoft Manufacturing Company. The first being our big meta, metal mega racing yachts. The second, and where they really came from originally, were these steam-powered vessels, naval, commercial, and of course yachting, including launches and big yachts. And then the third, which is probably more numerous, but certainly smaller in terms of revenue, would have been the wooden boats. As a result, you're looking at this and you come to the realization this is a very, very complex business back in 1903, the time of Reliance. With different workforce, building metal boats, building wooden boats, sail makers, uh, boiler makers, engine makers, a huge machine shop, there's a lot of complexity in skill sets and competencies that are being built up to build these various boats. The other was that Reliance was launched 177 days from receipt of order. That in itself is very astounding, but you have to realize that the first of the big metal-hulled racing yachts, uh, schooners, was also ordered one month before Reliance for delivery in that same 1903 racing season and she's about 125 feet long overall. Then you look at the book of business and you see that there was uh, two weeks before Reliance a 50-foot waterline cutter order, Aralita, and 12 Bar Harbor 31s, that would be 31 feet on the waterline, 22 sailboats in all. But that's only part of the story that was going on here because there were 15 power boats that were delivered in the time frame of Reliance, including when she was being ordered, uh, the delivery of a 130-foot yacht, later on delivery of a 90-foot or a 60-foot or 250-footers, 15 power vessels in all. So there's 37 new boats going out of here in that time frame, plus their refitting uh, Constitution and Columbia to be trial horses for the 1903 America's Cup. That complexity in manufacturing level is going on all the time that over the past uh, decade and a half they have been introducing new boats, new designs on sort of this annual, uh, biannual time frame whereby their previous race boats are being uh, uh, superseded. So all their customers are coming back. In fact, that's the, the, the Apple computer model with the iPads if you want, you know, 100 years beforehand. So then it, it just leads you, wait a second, how did John Brown Harrisoff, who was, who was um, blind since a teenager, but was a boat builder, how did he run the business? How do you do the cost estimating? How do you do all the customer relationships? And in fact, a lot of the people, the local Bristolians, will talk about how he was in the shops as well. And how did he and his younger brother, Nat, who's the only engineer, supported by uh, three to four draftsmen, no computers, get all of these boats out of here in that time frame? So what, we, what we're seeing here is unlike what the, the, the museum, when you talk about the boats down there, they'll talk about Nat Harrisoff's designs. What we're seeing is Nat Harrisoff as a manufacturing engineer. There's a lot going on here because he's not only the design engineer, he's the superintendent of the shop. So whatever he builds, he has to uh, build and, or fix and make it right. And so he spends the morning doing drafting and he'll, uh, designing and he'll spend the afternoons in the shops making sure that everything's working. He's also this wonderful structural engineer. And so it's the combination of all of this that I think really makes him a very spectacular engineer in a very, very modern sense, which lines up with a very modern Harrisoft manufacturing company that is dealing with this continuous development. It is manufacturing company. It isn't design, Harrisoft design or it isn't Harrisoft engineering company. It is a manufacturing company. It's, it's dealing with complexity, it's dealing with manufacturing, very complex manufacturing problems and engineering problems. Uh, wonderful lessons for today. So many kinds of things to enjoy here, many kinds of things to learn about, and I hope you enjoy your visit.